We're going to have a brilliant panel about uh, women, about breaking stereotypes, about women in this industry. And first of all, I'd like to talk to an absolute icon uh, that you will all know. So it's Minaz Diamond. She's laughing. Come on. I think we sit here. Uh, just before the panel begins, because everybody, if you don't know Minaz, Minaz is the most powerful person in the hotel industry <laughs> on earth. No. It's true that people will talk about other people. Don't listen to that. Um, so thank you so much for coming because you know about Accor. Tell us about how you got into it and then tell us about how women are faring. was actually made redundant after 10 years because we'd been taken over by Granada and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. People often wonder if the redundancy thing is a bad thing or a good thing. Honestly, it can be a really good thing because it makes you sit back, take a th think about what you wanted to do. And I really wanted to work for an international company and opportunities came up. I'm talking about a, a while back when, you know, today you've got LinkedIn, Monster, all these websites that you can go to for jobs. Over there, it was all about networking as well as applying for jobs that you saw and going through um, you know third parties you know going through uh, employment agencies or whatever so but I remember seeing this role advertised in the Sunday Times and uh, for Starwood as a ITT Sheraton as it was then so I applied for it and again I was very very fortunate the people that I worked with were uh, really amazing and helped me along the way and these things move on, and then, you know, you say, well, what made the difference? A lot of things can make a difference. I think the most important thing is that you help people along the way because there are people who help you. And always remember that it's nicer to have people advocate for you when you're not in the room as well. And part of that comes about by being collaborative, being helpful, and just generally understanding what is it that makes the room tick. What, you know, try and read the room, you know, what's important to people. Because what's important to one person is not necessarily important to the other. So I think I learned a lot of these lessons the hard way sometimes because I was very professional. A lot of people thought of me as very professional. And uh, in many ways that came across sometimes as being arrogant. And I wasn't always aware of that, but somebody once told me we had this awful thing. I don't know if anybody remembers something called the fishbowl exercise. Anyone remember the fishbowl exercise? Where you sit, you remember, right? Most worst thing that can ever happen to you, you sit, um, and then the people that you've interacted with in that day in some kind of team building or whatever, they say three things that you should continue doing, three things that you should stop doing, and three things that you should start doing. Well, oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. What is that? Yeah. Also, you spend an, a day with them. Wait, because you've you spent a day with them doing some kind of training, you know, all this, some kind of management training or something. disgusting. Continue. Yes. But no one does that anymore. You'd probably get shot if you were doing that because the things that people said to me is that, I, you know, I need to start smiling more because I didn't smile enough. And, okay, fine. I'll go around like this, Richter-faced. And then the thing that you should continue to do is, you know, obviously the things that, you know, you, know, you, can, you can be, you make a joke and get a laugh, continue doing that. Things that you should stop doing will stop looking down your nose at people and being so arrogant. And really the only reason why I was looking down my nose often is because I'm short-sighted. And, you know, I didn't want to wear my glasses, you know, being vain. So, 
anyway, you learn. So you learn different things in different ways. And I think that's the most important thing. Tell me about, because we're about to have a brilliant uh, panel talking yeah. about uh, women's roles and stereotypes. How are women doing in the industry from your point of view right now? I think women are doing amazingly in the industry, in every area of the industry. I mean, if you look at the events industry, uh, if you look at companies, a lot of companies are run by women on the events and man uh, management side. Hotel industry, if you look at large companies like Accor, like I'm part of now, um, you know, we have, um, we have sort of initiatives where something like 40% of our top management is women. You know, so I think that women are generally doing a lot better. All kind, there's there's room for uh, so many different types of roles for women. Now, if you want to come back after maternity leave, um, you can come back in different types of roles. You know, so I think the opportunities are endless, and I think our industry in particular, whether it's hotels or events, there's so many different types of roles. Whatever strengths or talents you have. You find where your strengths and talents are, and I can guarantee you that there's an opportunity for you to do something that works in this industry. That's brilliant. Do you have any tips as well? Because there was a panel yesterday, and they said recruitment is a problem at the moment. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I, I, I took it on board. Um, how, how, does, uh, how do hotels, or how the events industry, how does it attract more brilliant men and women? Well, I think, again, it's about ensuring that people understand what are the different roles in the industry. You know, there's the creative role. There's, uh, you know, people who love doing spreadsheets and Excels. There's a logistics role. So there are many different roles, and I think it's about ensuring that people understand that. I think today there's a lot of young people who want to get into different industries, but they want to progress, and they think of progression as being a linear progression but it's not always linear you can learn different things by going across and doing you know different roles in the same area um, sorry different area but a different role so think about what you want to what you want to do and I always say to people who ask me you know what should I do I want to progress and I say well think about where your talents are and build on those don't try and think that I want to be a leader because and that means managing 20 people it's not about that it's about what is going to bring out the best in you and work on you? Because really, when you get in sometimes managing 20 people, you might not like that because, you know, they're too demanding. You don't want to do the grunt stuff. You just want the recognition. So be very, very clear about what's important to you and why it's important to you. And if you don't know, I say to people who are starting off in the industry, do something like Strengths Finder. Find out what are your top five strengths and then build on those rather than trying to, you know, think that you need to be someone else's idea of what's successful because, you know, that's not what's going to work for you always. That is brilliant. And finally, because I know that we'll talk about mentoring, because lots of people who I've spoken to after the last, over the last two days have said it's so vital to find somebody you believe in and just help them or go, do you know what, I'm not right for you, but this person will be right for you. Would you agree? Absolutely. But the other thing is don't wait for your company, if you're working for a large or a medium-sized company, to start up a, 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 an organized mentoring program. I think, you know, find mentors or colleagues in the industry. There are many people who are able to help you if you need, just ask for advice. I think those informal networks can work much better. I'm part of something called, um, you know, Women in Leadership for Sight, and I used to work very closely with who's going to be on the panel next and worked on a mentor program there, which was great. So you have these organized, but even if there are nothing, nothing organized, you know, find people that you think you re can relate to, and I would say reach out to them. And more often than not, when you ask for advice, people are willing to give it. Thank you so much. A round of applause, please, Thank you. for Minas. Thank you very much. And now, please welcome our amazing panel. As they come onto the stage, Felicia, our leader, is going to read a monologue. But please welcome Faye, Elizabeth, Hannah, and Natalie. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, hello. Number seven, here we are. Some of you might recognize this, some of you might not, but I'm just going to read. It is literally impossible to be a woman. You are so beautiful and so smart, and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough. Like, we have to always be extraordinary, but somehow we're always doing it wrong. You have to be thin, but not too thin, 
And you can never say you want to be thin. You have to say you want to be healthy, but you also have to be thin. You have to have money, but you can't ask for money because that's crass. You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. You have to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You have to be a career woman, but you also have to be looking out for other people. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane. But if you point that out, you're accused of complaining. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be part of the sisterhood. But always stand out and always be grateful, but never forget that the system is rigged. So find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's too hard. It's too contradictory. And nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but it's also your fault. I am just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself in knots so that people will like us. And if all of that is also true for a doll just representing women, then I don't even know. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. That is from the Barbie movie. Uh, thank you so much to our brilliant panel here today. Please introduce yourselves. And not only that, if you don't mind saying why you set up your company, what it does, and any other background would be magical. Sure. Hello, hey. Claudia. How are you? Oh, very well. Good. Um, well, I'm Faye Sharp, OBE. Thank you. Um, and uh, first of all, 60 is the new 40 because I'm 60 next year and I don't give a damn. Um, I'm also a mum of two. Hopefully soon they'll be having grandchildren, so that will be a great experience. Um, and I just wanted, before I talk about my company and what I've done, I just wanted to be quick to, to tell you about my background. So I come from a council house background, uh, working class parents, dad was a janitor, mum worked in a shop. And so I pulled myself up by my bootstraps, put myself through uni, worked four jobs, uh, got my first job um, in a major hotel group. And when I was about 25, I was probably the youngest ever director of sales for that hotel group. And I always remember my boss saying to me, Faye, you're the best salesperson we've ever had. But when you start having kids, how are you going to be able to do your job? That wouldn't be, they wouldn't be able to say it now. I mean, I'm, I'm a veteran in the industry. So I quickly realized that I wasn't going to be able to get to where I wanted to get to. I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30 and uh, not having any money. And so I set up my own agency, Zybrant, which was uh, one of the largest agencies in the UK. I've got many ex-Zybrant teammates over here, um, 250 people. I sold that for 16 million in uh, 2007, bought it back, <laughs> bought it back for 3 million, sold it again to BCD meeting events. And, um, and then I decided, I stood in a room of uh, the Event 100 and... Um, 80 odd percent of the nominees were men. And I was like, I love men, they're lovely, but why are there not more women here? So I set about setting up a free program for women in the events and hospitality industry where they would be um, work through a governed program, not just a sort of matching up, they had a whole year of education, uplifting, awards, and one-on-one -on -one mentoring with an industry uh, senior level person from all walks of the industry and um, that was 10 years ago and here I am now so yes so that's my background thank you, thank you so much Elizabeth please and I have to follow that now do I <laughs> damn your good woman <laughs> thank you I don't have an OBE but I am also nearly 60 I started my business after as Mina spoke to being invigorated after being made redundant out of one of the third largest PR agencies in the world. And I specialized in PR at that time. I went home and sat there and thought, what the earth am I going to do? I've got these, all these skills. They didn't like women in the business. We were, we were challenging. I also had the redundancy because I'd lost a baby very late stage in pregnancy. And the only thing my boss said to me was, wow, you've lost weight when I walked back into the business. 
And it was that catalyst underneath me that made me realize I had to do something for myself. I had to follow my own values, which is one reason that, um, did I actually say I'm from Orange Door? No, that Orange Door has become a B Corp because I want to ensure that we continue that framework and the values of our company are, are there for everybody to see. So starting the company allowed me to continue my, continue my own values. We're a global agency. We work in events across Europe, Asia Pac, everywhere you want to, our clients want us to go. We do exhibition. We have a thriving company. I'm over the moon to say that my son works in the business, so it is a family-run business, and my son is giving me a grandchild next year, so I did beat you at something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. And no, you can't have it all, but you can work really, really hard to achieve it. But um, it has been one hell of a roller coaster. I absolutely love that um, that cartoon that shows people walking, shows the straight line to success, and then it shows the real line to success. And you know, if any of us have got successful business, you know that it's the most complicated way to get there. I mean, the pandemic had nothing on recessions and HR and all the things that get thrown at us as, as women in business. So um, that's who I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Hannah, please. Hi, I'm Hannah. Um, I'm the CEO of M Media Events. Um, a little bit about me, I have just become a mum this summer, so I had my first child um, earlier this year. Thank you. Uh, he actually came two months earlier as well, so I had to deal with the premature side of things, um, dealing with managing a business and having a child in hospital as well. Um, but a little bit about me, um, I always knew really from school, it's quite an unusual case of uh, wanting to be an entrepreneur, wanting to work for myself. So um, when I started my career, I really stumbled into events. Um, from college, uh, I wanted to get out into the working world, found an event company, started off in sales, and this was B2B events, uh, worked my way up, and then I kind of realized that if I really wanted to have my own business, I need to gather as much experience as possible from all different types of event companies. So from there, I then moved to a different role, um, which was more of a startup-based event company. That then got acquired, and as part of that acquisition, I actually was the only member to move to San Francisco and help set up that office uh, for that company. Um, I lived in San Francisco then for three and a half years, came back, gathered as much kind of experience again, different roles, um, and then I felt the time was right to set up my own company. So M Media Events was set up in 2019, one-man band on my own, um, and the vision is um, we create the events ourselves, so we, I wanted to go down the future of work, which is fitting with what's going on now. Um, but yeah, so I started off with a London event and we've now grown to four different locations. So we are in Canada, the US, APAC um, and London and we'll be going to Dubai next year as well. A small team of 10, but um, yeah, that's I guess a little bit about me and where we are. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, God. Natalie. <laughs> Help me. Um, okay, so hi, I'm Natalie the Val. Um, I'm the brown girl in the ring. Tra la 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 la. Um, so um, I work at the moment for Red Bull. I'm a culture events manager, so I look after all their dance events um, up and down the country. They do street dance and b boys and, and Afro dance, so I look after the whole strategy of that. Um, and I also have my own business called March Muses, um, and we create Christmas decoration of colour. So black angels, black Santa, black choir boys. Um, and it started when my daughter, who was seven at the time, I've got two daughters, um, she was seven at the time and she asked me as we were hanging decorations on our tree, mommy, can Christmas angels have brown skin? And I said, of course they can have brown skin. What a silly question. Why would you ask me that as I was hanging up white angel, white Santa, white elf in the, elf, elf in the shelf? So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to go online. I'm just going to buy some. It's easy. It was 2018 or 2019, and I was like, okay, it'd be fine. Went on Amazon, went on Etsy, went everywhere. <laughs> there were no black angels. I was like, oh, that's strange. Found some in America, but it cost like 25 pounds to get over here. My business partner found one in a shop, but it was a white angel painted black. So basically the angel was doing blackface, which we don't like. So we kind of walked into 2019 with an idea of like, okay, 
I want to make sure that my children can see themselves at Christmas. And when we think about Santa Claus, I mean, the vision that we see is the commercial vision of him. He's actually based on Saint Nick, who was a story from, I think, Turkey, and he was skinny, he wore green, and he would would have been brown at the very least. So the vision that we get is very much the Coca-Cola kind of commercial version. And so we went into 2019 with a mission to kind of make sure that nobody and no children asks that question again, can Christmas angels be brown? Um, and then we went on to Dragon's Den, which was really cool. And we got investment from Peter Jones and Deborah Meaden. Um, and then last week we launched in Tesco nationwide, a whole range of black decorations. That's me. <laughs> You're so clever. And by the way, a shout out to your seven-year-old who's literally just asking a question and started off her mum on a... And she reminds me this every day. She's like, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have this business. <laughs> and, she, and she tells me, so, yeah. Smart girl. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, what is, what's it like out there now for women? Because I often hear when there are these conversations, I've done panels like this before, we go, oh, it's so much better, but isn't there... A lot to do. So. so so I think we're our own worst enemies sometimes. Yeah. As women, we do not put ourselves forward. We're quite compliant about things. Um, we, for example, I mentor hundreds of women, and obviously they go through my program, and they talk about their side hustles or their um, freelance job. We are entrepreneurs. If you were... A, not sorry, guys, but men would call themselves an entrepreneur. So I think we sometimes dumb ourselves down in terms of what we're doing. And I think we need to... I think it's happening, Claudia. I think we're much more um, forward now. But I still think that there's so much to do in that we have to keep pushing forward. You know, don't be compliant. If we want something, we have to ask for it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not being bossy or aggressive. As long as you go about it in the right way, um, you know... It's a good thing. As a boss, when I used to run my company, I wanted people, men or women, to come to me and say, what next? Where can I go? What's the opportunity? And I think that too many of us ladies wait until we're 100% ready for whatever the opportunity is, when actually men may be a much more likely at 60% to go, okay, I'm going to go for that. So we have to learn to stand up and be counted sooner because it's only you and your career that's that's lagging behind um, and that affects pay that affects your promotion that affects everything you do so it's there we just have to believe in ourselves we have to stop apologizing stop apologizing also be confident you know the thing is even if you don't really feel confident just for that moment uh we, we did pitching this morning and i said for this moment guys be confident, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong, just put yourself out there and try. That's all you can do. And um, I think that's one thing I think that um, we can do for ourselves and it's, you know, it's a no brainer. Would you agree? The one thing I've noticed with uh, women after running a business for 24 years is that um, they very rarely ask for pay rises. They very, very rarely ask for the next move. They wait for, I think Nina's mentioned it earlier, they wait for the mentoring thing to be offered to them. And I think that's what you've got to do. You've got to get out there and you've got to believe in yourself that you've got exactly the same rights as anyone else in that room to, to, to get that pay rise, to get that promotion. And, and to ask for the mentoring, to ask for the things that you need in order to get what you want. Um, coming from where I do come from, you know, I grew up with uh, Margaret Thatcher and all the rest of them, and it was a real power world and, um, you know, shoulder pads and big curly hair. So a bit similar today. But it's, um, you know... <laughs> That's what we normally wear, isn't it, actually? <laughs> but it's, it's... And then women used to walk on top of each other because we had to feel we needed to compete. Anything to get on that ladder. I don't think it's like that. I think there are still some people out there that, that are a bit like that. But as a rule, I find women are very kind to women. We support them. We want them to succeed. You spoke earlier about if someone is having a baby in the, in the business or something. We tend to embrace that. We tend to put our arms around those people and help them to get there. And you just need to be braver and louder and stronger with your voice in your business or in your own career to, to move forward. Anna, you're nodding. Yeah, um, I would second what Elizabeth says there, but I would also say we are definitely moving in the right direction. But from my standpoint, 
um, as a CEO, but also working for other corporate companies, there needs to be more responsibility on us uh, in leadership or in organizations about some of the things that us as women go through. So, you know, uh, miscarriages, menopause, um, having a child, and like you said, you know, having companies that do open with, uh, sorry, that are encouraging or supportive of that I still feel that there's a lot of taboo topics and organizations and leaders don't know you know with miscarriages for instance how do companies deal with that how do you as a leadership team feel that you are supporting women through that um, and are giving you know what they need for that and it's more of um, for each individual's need they feel that the company is, is giving all of the support uh, I don't feel we're quite there yet on some of those more taboo topics. I think um, there still needs to be more transparency and just more of women coming together and talking about it more and building those networks to understand, okay, well, how can we support some of these um, different things that goes on? Can I add to so I think you've got to look at it from the employer's point of view too because obviously a lot of people, you guys are all business owners too, and the thing is, right, is that as an employer, if you treat people right and you lead from the front and you set the example and you're fair, people will work harder and work for you and with you. So anyone who says, oh, well, you know, that's a problem or issue, it benefits you by treating people in, a, in the right way because they're going to just they're going to work harder. A, a friend of mine who isn't here, so she can't talk, but she won't mind me telling you, a super successful, fantastic woman only hired new mums. And she sold her company for an absolute fortune because she said, I've told them they don't have to come in or they can come in. There was a room that was like a creche. It was just covered in baby gyms. And uh, they're not gyms. They're, they're <laughs> I was like, they were very pushy parents. Lift it. No. <laughs> They just would lie down. And they said, you can come in if you want because you might also just want an hour to yourself and we'll watch the baby. She, they was, I know this is boring. I should not speak. But I apologize. But it was so fascinating because these, the people that they hired were so grateful. So she said, there are some women you wouldn't hear from for four days because you don't know. Maybe baby's got a rash, got for a bit or something. And she said, but there would be a flurry of, I've had these ideas. You know that night feed, those night feeds? Or like when you're like... But you go, oh, I haven't checked in. And she said, selfishly, she got so much out of these amazing people who she employed. I, I was going to say, like, sometimes the nine to five isn't for everyone. That, that, that time frame, nine to five, like, I mean, I, I don't know if you've got kids here, but that school run is horrendous. That's way too much that happens before 8 a.m. in the morning. And I'm just like, it's horrific. And I, I do the school run. And then before I was getting to work, it was 9 a.m. I felt stressed. I felt annoyed. I felt sweaty. I, it just wasn't. I'm. I'm a night owl. I'm more of a 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. kind of girl. And when um, COVID happened, you know, that work-life balance actually became, if you, were, if you were lucky enough to work in a corporate and they said work from home, that working from home made all the difference to productivity, to the work-life balance. I didn't have to wake my child up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. to get them to the breakfast club in the morning. I was able to just breathe and I didn't have a monster and I could actually love her. And, and also, <laughs> PS, nice then her. you have to go and get them at 3.20. You have to get what them at 3.20, and then if you're late, it's a pound a minute. And yeah. so I was like, oh, my gosh. So it's, it's so much that's changed, which I think, you know, you have to really, like what you said, being a good leader is a, knowing what a life balance is and making sure that everyone, knowing that everyone has a different life balance to you and there's no one mould. I've spent my whole life being guilty. Guilty at work, guilty at home, whatever I do, I'm guilty. And I think, um, like, we're all working mums. Um, it's really hard. And, but now I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I just don't I love care. that. Yeah. I do, I, seriously, though, I mean, I was, I was lucky enough to be the boss, but I still had partners and people in the business that I wanted to respect me. So I would do all my work, probably twice as much work as a lot of the other people in the business, go home, do my motherly things, and then start working again until whenever. I mean, it's a wonder, you know, that I'm still here today, actually, because I should be about two foot.
I actively employed women from the school gate. It was just a brilliant, uh, brilliant strategy at the beginning of the business because they were keen, they were desperate. People didn't want to work with women because they felt if we had kids and stuff, it was a real barrier to them giving. But it's exactly what you said, Natalie. They give so much. Yeah. Women give so much back into your business. And as a leader, you have to give back to them to allow them to do what they want to do. It's gone a little bit too far sometimes. I think most leaders in, in our industry when we sit on the mice book panels and things like that, one of the big conversations is about remote working and how do we balance it. And it, is bal it isn't balanced at the moment. It is very challenging for a lot of us. But women make such a difference in my business. They, they're transformational in the work that they do. You were going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it also comes down to adaptability as you as a leader. So um, for me, starting off in the working world, it was my leadership was, you know, this is my style of leadership. You need to meet me here and this is how I am. Um, whereas I think now for me, when I run my organization, it's adapting to each of the individual needs. Um, like you said, working mums, uh, we're an all-female business, which we're very proud of. 50% um, of them are mums. Um, but also the adaptability for those who aren't mums as well and have other things going on in their lives so I think it's for you as a leader of that adaptability of looking at each individual and being able to look at your leadership on just that individual basis versus this is how I run my company and this is how I lead my company. Okay. I, there's so much I want to say, but I'll just be very quick that Strictly is entirely run by women. We don't make a fuss about it, but it's an BAFTA award-winning director. She's called Nikki. Our producer's uh, Sarah. My producer's Nicola. So it's, it's all... There was a boy there once. We can't remember his <laughs> name. And, but in terms of different, we all go to Blackpool, and depending on... So we've been through births, marriages, divorces, all of it, and it's a massive team. And there are some people like... Anyway... But yes, depending where you are on life, some people are going out till 4 a.m. Others are feeding a newborn in their room, having just produced a massive live show. And the person who is in charge of that has to make sure everyone's fine. You know, anyway, I know that's boring. I shouldn't say it. Oh. Let's talk about labels, because I'm interested in the fact that women are labeled all the time. My mum was a working woman, was constantly labeled. I was like, that's annoying. Uh, let's start with Bossy. You're calling me Bossy. <laughs> Um, but it's quite interesting, isn't it, that women, if they... Oh, yeah, go on, go on, darling. Um, I would say it, what's quite sad is when you say bossy, it's always aimed at women. You never call ne it a male always. bossy. It's always, um, yeah, females, which is unfortunate. I don't know where that's come from. Yeah. Um, but I would say... If you are being called bossy, I see you as a leader. Um, you're someone that is leading the pack. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to have this negative connotation to it. I think it can be seen as a positive. Um, but also be mindful, you know, of your delivery of certain things. If you are being called bossy, then sometimes, you know, all of us, men or female, need to take a step back sometimes as a leader and think, okay, you know, am I empathetic? You know, am I delivering this in the best way? But my side of it is, I, if I was called bossy, I'd see it as a leader, is my, my perspective. I think you need to be assertive to be a leader. Yeah. You can't sit in a room and go, oh, what do you think? No, no, what do you think? Or you, and <laughs> endlessly apologising. Absolutely. You, you have to be assertive. You have to know your own thoughts, but you, you, you work in collaboration with people. My mother used to call me bossy, and it, used to, it still has hurt me inside. I'll go and get some therapy for it one day, but, um, you know, she, she, it, it is a real issue, I think. And I think we're, we're very bad at things as well. Lots of people in this room will say, oh, she throws like a girl, or she catches like a girl, or she runs like a girl. We've got to stop using yeah. all of this terminology. We've got to stop using bossy, and we've got to change these words into she is assertive, she knows what she wants, she's equal with men. Or make bossy a positive. My daughter's 17, and she runs... Our whole community, as far as we can work out, she is, she's the most magnificent creature I've ever met, but she is also bossy, and it, but in a good way. Like, good, because otherwise we wouldn't know, otherwise I couldn't roast a chicken, unless she was <laughs> telling me what to do. Another thing that is said as a negative towards women, but never as a man, is you are soft or emotional. And I've gone soft. Bring it on. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say, anyone who knows me, and there's a lot of people that have known me for a long time, I used to be a bit of a ball breaker. And, um, but I've changed. I don't need to be like that anymore. I actually, uh, I think having children helps. I think um, 
understanding that whole lesson of bringing people with you, male or female, it doesn't matter. Um, so I've, I've gone from, I thought I had to be a ball breaker. That's the problem. That was what I thought I had to do to succeed. And now I've realized, like I said, I don't care. Um, I do care, but I don't care, if you know what I mean. So now I'm just me. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think, especially as a black woman, you get the, oh, you're a strong black woman. You're sassy. You're and yeah, I am. But I'm also soft. And I'm also, like, tired. And I'm also strong. And I'm also bossy. And I'm also catty. But I'm also sweet. And I'm also nice. Like, I am all of the above. And so... I think it's about just accepting that because we can all be all of these things and just knowing the environment that you insert one of those things into. So do I need to be softer at this point? Do I need to be assertive at this point? Because the one thing about women is our transferable skills are second to none. Like, as a, as a, like I'm going to go from my experience. As a mum, I am the cook, the cleaner, the banker, the referee. You know, you, you, you play so many different roles. You don't even realise how many roles you're playing until you actually put it into practice. You're like, oh, yeah, I learned that because my kid was having a tantrum and I had to be assertive in that moment. Oh, yeah, I had to plan this amazing party for my seven-year-old, hence why I got into events because I was very good at throwing her a party. So you learn from all your um, transferable skills and then you put that into good use and yes it might come across as soft it might come across as bossy but you need all of those to be a successful person you're absolutely right I don't get the Alan Sugar way of working it's I, I have never understood the apprentice the rudeness the the trampling over people it's not necessary in order to achieve and uh, if any of you like The Apprentice, I'm so sorry, but I just think it's wrong the way that that is portrayed. That that's how business. That's how business should yeah. be. You have I'll to you have to look at the output of some of the candidates. I'm not sure I would employ some of those people, but um, you know, Katie what's hey, Katie Hopkins being one, and you know, I don't think that's that's where we need to be. Yeah. Uh, another word that's banded about, only about women, never about men. Catty. You know, like, there's a, ooh, you've got your claws. What are you talking about? I mean, are we catty? Or are we just good at communication? Are we just good at talking? I, I, or just, are we just good at sharing? Or are we, are we catty? Or can you just, you just can't pull the wool over my eyes? Is that what it is that, you know, I'm, I can see through you? I think that's all it is. I think, you know, these, they're, they're labels, they're words, they're stereotypes. They're always going to be there. And it's just how you define it for yourself and how you take it on for yourself. And just don't take it too seriously. Yeah. Very good point. We, uh, we, we've, you're also amazing. I need to get to, they want me to discuss the power of you. Um, and that, that, you four are so utterly brilliant. You can give us wonderful tips for women who are watching either here or virtually, just about looking after yourself, not putting yourself just front and forward because it's about looking after others. But what, it, what is the answer? How do, you, how do people put themselves, how do they make a success? So, so I, I watched um, Dame Kelly Holmes this morning. I thought she was a brilliant speaker, right? What, what an incredible woman. Um, and one of the things that she said that I also talk about a lot is self-belief. And you have to start with you. No, you can't change anyone else. You might be able to put your opinion across, but you cannot change someone else if they're you know, not going to support you. You can only do you. So the first place to start in anything you do is to, to be at ease with yourself. Be comfortable with who you are. I've always been a bit quirky and I haven't always fitted in. Um, you know, that's okay though. I don't mind. People that love me, love me. I'm like Marmite. Some people love <laughs> me, some people don't. Um, that's okay. I'm not expecting to be everyone's cup of tea. But I am honest, I am fair, and I am true. And I live by my values. So my values, to me, um, you know, are, are where I start. And I think if you can look at yourself honestly and be comfortable in your own skin, be comfortable with what you do, then you're on the right pathway. Um, and, you know, stop putting yourself down, be confident, and just put, do whatever you want to do. Thank you. I wrote four things down that I wanted to say to the girls, uh, the, the, the ladies in the audience about, first of all, accept help. There are plenty of people out there from Faye's amazing Fast Forward 15 to the other mentoring systems that are out there. 
um, accept help from the people in your business. There's DWEN, there is We Connect, which is an incredible global network that is out there to support women-owned businesses. And it's not just about getting you into, into supply chains, it's also about the women supporting women. So go out there and get the help. Set your boundaries. You have to walk into your office and say, I am leaving at half past five, so don't give me the look. I'm going home to my family, and if I need to go back online, I will. And don't feel apologetic for doing that. You know, if you set the boundaries right at the beginning, it will work. If you just let everyone keep abusing you, it, you've got no way out of that. Um, don't apologize for leaving at 6 o'clock or 5.30 or whenever you turn off. It's fine. And lastly, be kind. Be kind to women and be kind to guys in your business. And if I think if we all do that to each other, we're all going to get a lot further in this world. Um, I would say for me, uh, given kind of the experience I've gone through the last 12 months with my son, um, flexibility and embracing flexibility more. Um, and um, as Elizabeth said, more on your working hours as well. Um, and that transparency to your team as well, that like we said, not everyone is a nine to five and that's okay. And having that with the team and showing that transparency is really important. So, um, sorry, I've not saying as much but for me it's short and sweet of really from that side um for me it's know your superpower so we've all got a superpower so know what it is i know that like being black is my superpower being a mum is my superpower um if you don't know anything there is a youtube video for everything ah! yeah there is a youtube video for everything if you don't know what seo is go and look it up if you don't know how to there is a youtube video for everything and if it all becomes too much and you can't get up and it's just a lot, then, you know, those Ella kitchen pouches, they turn into amazing samosas. You put them in a, in a wine glass, put some Prosecco on top, perfect samosa to end up the day. But just know what your superpower is. We've all got it. Oh, and go to a drama class. If you're not confident, just find a drama class and go to it. Do one class and just learn how to, to talk to people and to be in front of people. I love the YouTube video. I tried to cut and pet. I'm so old now. I tried to... Hello. I'm so sorry I didn't introduce you. Thank you for being here. So um, I, I couldn't cut and paste in a Word document. I thought, oh, I can't do it. Anyway, I went on YouTube and I'll stop. Um, are there any questions for these amazing women? Do you have any questions? I'm, I'm here with a microphone also. And I can see oh, there's, there's so many questions in the app, but there's, there's one live. So I'm going to try and switch there, between. There. I see. I see. Okay. Venus, hello. Hello, my name is Venus Pinedo. I'm the creator of Safe Space Plus. You might have seen it in the restrooms or the, the elevator. Um, I'm so excited to see this room so full of women and allies and the interest in, in what you're sharing. So my question to you is, what is one small thing that everyone can do today as they walk out of this room to support the women in their lives? So, so I've got a really great thing you can do, and that is it doesn't matter where you are in your career, you can actually reciprocate mentorship. So if you meet someone here today, doesn't matter who they are, just say to them, would you mind having a coffee with me to have a chat about, you know, my goals? I'm happy to do the same for you. And A, you make a new connection, and B, you potentially could find a new mentor. And it doesn't matter if they're older, younger, because sometimes younger people... I learn a lot from younger people, my, like, like you. Yeah. So I think that would, you could go away from this event, this fantastic event, event with a mentor. So I would say to you, go and ask someone today for that, um, for that one thing. Who's not going to have a coffee? Who's not going to be flattered by that? Be weird. Smile at people. <laughs> I'd be weird on the tube. I actually don't catch tubes, so I don't know what happens out there. But really, really be, be nice to people. <laughs> fear of mine I would I need to go to therapy I've got so many issues <laughs> but no be nice to people I love that you know and smile and when you go outside and you next talk to someone you work with and you say how are you today and go no no how are you really I believe it's three or four term times you actually have to ask somebody and really get underneath it and honestly listen to them and that's what I would do thank you I would say network as well, which is similar to those of, you know, try and push yourself out of your comfort zone and utilize these events like this to go and meet some new exciting people. Um, you know, from a career perspective as well, you never know where those conversations may go. Uh, 
without a doubt, network, talk to everyone because you never know who knows someone 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 else who's going to be like, oh, I know that person, yeah, and get you in. And that's literally how we got into Tesco. That's how we started like our journey. It's literally just through word of mouth and people wanting to see you win. And what you said was absolutely, when, when we met, she went, oh my God, you're so beautiful. And I'm going to remember that for the rest of this. No, but thank you. But that's so sweet. But I'm going to remember that for the rest of this day. And like those little moments, just like you, you have no idea how that can change someone's mood. True. Thank you so much for that question. Um, um, if there are questions hello. in the room, that's perfect. Hello. If not, hello. we'll go to the app. Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm on. Um, so there's been, there's a question that's been upvoted eight times, so I have to ask it. It's the rules. So it says, do you feel that men are encouraged to dress in a more relaxed way? Jacket, but no tie. But women are expected to power dress if they want to be taken seriously in a leadership role. Do you know what? I had a panic attack this morning when I was choosing my outfit. I literally was like, oh my God, what am I going to... Who knows what to wear nowadays? Because hands up, anyone's got a clue what you went to wear? No, no, me neither. So I, I don't know. I think that um, it's really hard, isn't it, finding the right genre for business nowadays. Um, I just wear what I feel. I've got sort of certain things that make me feel good, so I just wear those. I don't think so. I don't think men. I think men wear too what they're comfortable in, and I think it's all dependent on age as well. Yeah, and, ex and experience. I was going to say, when we did um, Dragon's Den, we were both in heels because we were like, oh, we're, we're business people, so we have to wear heels. And we went into Dragon's Den and obviously you're on the TV show, you see 15 minutes, but actually you're in there for two hours. And we were in there for two hours in these heels. And I remember we didn't negotiate because I, li I literally just wanted to leave. I was like, I need to take these shoes off. And ever since that day, so I will walk, I'm, I'm a Jordan's girl, I'm like Nike, like I will be the, tr I'll, I'll be all party up here, but like, like Jordan's at the bottom. And I think, you know, I think that's sometimes the way to go. Be comfortable. That's, that's my message are to you guys. Are, the, are those babies healed though? <laughs> they look good. They, are they healed no. trainers? Because they no. look good. Thank they you. Good. They're just Jordans. I think it's determined by the industry you work in. Yeah. I think really, I mean, there are some industries out there. I still see people in the city walking around in suits and wonder why the hell. I've never understood why men have to wear ties. It's, I think it's a ridiculous thing in the world. Um, but it's just, I think you should feel comfortable. But I do believe that clothes give you power. Um, that's a personal thing. I feel walking on this stage today, yeah, did I wear the high shoes? No, I just had a knee operation a few months back. It, you know, they, they make me totter. I don't get up properly. So, you know, you go for the, the Gucci's or something. So I think power is all, it, it, it's about, it, sorry. It, 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 <laughs> No, but I, I think, I mean, I, I use a fringe, but you get, yeah, for power. Um, but you find it in different ways. But I remember once complaining to a man, going, oh, you just have to put on a suit. And it's, for us, it's complicated my wearing. I mean, I've never worn a pencil skirt in my life because I've got very short legs. But I was like, and I could do this or I could do that. And he replied, but it's no fun. We have no fun. And I was like... Okay, you know, I take it back. All right. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm, I'm so happy to bash. Not really. I, I love men, but just to go and you just get off and put on a navy trousers, and they're like, it's so boring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how difficult it was getting on stage with you and your hair today? <laughs> <laughs> but look, I tell you what. I, yeah. Anyway, I was going to talk about the temperature. Men can be in charge of the temperature, and they often wear more layers than women, and women have to fight against cold rooms. But today and I'm wearing menopause. thermals and four pairs of socks that so were fun. Oh, Did, was that, I'm so sorry. And that, any other question? No, we're done. I, I'm so sorry, but we've run out of time. We've gone massively <laughs> over. We Thank you so much. Yet. We have a round of applause for our brilliant panel. <laughs> Faye, Elizabeth, Hannah and Natalie.